Today, I'm going to discuss Strongbow and the important role he played in the Anglo-Norman invasions of Ireland. To this day, there is still some confusion over what the proper name for this conflict should be. Some say the invasions were completely carried out by the English, while others say the Norman invasions of centuries prior had major influence on the actions of the English king, making the proper name for the conflict the Anglo-Norman invasion. Throughout the Central Middle Ages, European colonists confronted native populations that they referred to as barbarians. This is the case with invaders and the native Irish, as the Irish were viewed as lesser by the English. As the English continued to push west and divide up their land to be ruled by different monarchs, the Irish struggled to push back. Dermot McMurrow was an English monarch who was granted the Irish land of Leinster by King Henry II. In 1170, McMurrow set sail for Ireland, bringing with him Richard de Clare, or Strongbow, to lead his highly skilled army in their fight against the Irish. In Leinster, there was concern that the Irish, led by their high king Rory O'Connor, will continue to reclaim their lands as they were doing throughout the rest of Ireland. Eventually, Strongbow marries the daughter of Dermot McMurrow in a famous wedding depicted in this picture. This now meant that Strongbow was next in line to the throne, which he eventually rose to. As they gradually took back land from the Anglo-Norman invaders, the Irish, led by Rory O'Connor, set their sights on Leinster and the city of Dublin. Not much is known about Rory O'Connor, other than that he is the last true High King of Ireland before the eventual English conquest. O'Connor's troops were poorly managed and outmatched in terms of training and equipment. O'Connor put up a very tough fight considering they pushed back what was then the strongest military force in the world using inferior weapons and unskilled fighters. McMurrow had reason to worry, which is why he called on his trusted ally Strongbow. After being pushed out of Leinster and sent retreating to England, McMurrow worked to gather the most skilled fighters he could so he could return the following year and reclaim his land. Strongbow was chosen to lead the army, and in 1171 they set sail for Ireland once more. Rory O'Connor and the Irish continued to push east, unaware that Dermot McMurrow, Strongbow, and thousands of Anglo-Norman mercenaries were about to land on the port of Waterford. From Waterford, the invaders pushed up to Dublin, Ireland's largest city. They worked their way into the city after some conflicts arise with the inhabitants of Dublin. Eventually, they take back Dublin and prepare for the besiegers to arrive. In 1171, the city of Dublin was under siege. The Irish were moving east, and they were eager to reclaim their land. Strongbow and his men, fortified in the city, had to make a tough decision. They were ordered to return to England by King Henry II, and if they hadn't done it by the next year, they were to be exiled. King Henry II withdrew his support for Strongbow after realizing he might have paved the way for a strong Norman nation to take over all of Ireland. Despite this, Strongbow still left for Ireland and fought on behalf of his father-in-law, Dermot McMurrow. The inhabitants of Ireland were in a tough position. The English people living in Dublin were running out of food, and the Irish knew it. The Irish destroyed the crops surrounding Dublin in an attempt to starve the city, as they prepared for the siege. Rory O'Connor was set on avoiding the defeats he had suffered in years prior. Strongbow and the Normans were in a tough position. No more support was going to arrive from the homeland and most of Dublin's inhabitants were hostile to their new rulers. Eventually, Strongbow and others throughout the town gathered to discuss their strategy. They planned to slip out of the city and strike the poorly organized Irish fighters first. It is said that the Irish were so ill-prepared for the attack that Rory O'Connor, their leader, was having a swim in the river upon their arrival. 
The Normans were outnumbered and in poor condition due to starvation. But still, their surprise attack was successful. Strongbow and his men were driven by the fact that defeating the Irish besiegers was their only chance of survival. Their superior strategy helped them successfully push the Irish out of Dublin. This event is remembered to this day as the Siege of Dublin, though the Irish never actually made it past the city walls. Strongbow's idea to hit the Irish first outside the city was what led to their success and helped him gain the respect of King Henry II, who gave him large areas of Irish land as a reward. This massive defeat at the Siege of Dublin was one of the last for Rory O'Connor and his fighters. Not many years later, the Anglo-Norman invaders succeeded in taking Ireland and claiming it in the name of King Henry II. The invasion of Ireland had finally come to a close. Strongbow died a few years later, in 1176 though he is still remembered as one of the greatest legends to emerge from this period of invasions. His bravery and leadership during the Siege of Dublin earned him favor in the eyes of the crown and led to the fame we know of today. A replica of Strongbow's tomb remains on display for the public at Christ Church in Dublin, forever memorializing one of Ireland's greatest fighters. I hope this video made it clear why Strongbow was so important during the Anglo-Norman invasions of Ireland. The first attempt by Dermot McMurrow and the Normans to take Leinster was unsuccessful. Only after Strongbow arrived from England with his skilled fighters did the Normans have any chance of slowing down Rory O'Connor. His strategic planning in the Siege of Dublin helped push O'Connor and the Irish back out of Leinster snuffing out any hopes they had of reclaiming their native land. He also saved the city of Dublin from starvation, making him a local hero and earning him their loyalty. In conclusion, it's nearly impossible to imagine a successful invasion of Ireland if Richard de Clare or Strongbow had not intervened 